It's season three time! If you missed yesterday's episode and you don't know what league we're in today, then check the channel page for it. No spoilers at this early stage, although probably very soon. Of course, if you're looking forward to this third season, then do drop the video a like. If you're just enjoying the save as it happens, all told, then drop the video a like. Let me know your feedback as we move through in the comments section down below. I am looking to make some changes to the starting lineup in this transfer window. Spoilers are incoming about the uh, the league, so uh, be wary of that. Of course, you see that we are not playing with Leonardo Pinto at Cam. As per yesterday's episode, he has agreed to go to PSV on a year's loan. So he will go, he has gone, to the Eredivisie and will be out on loan this year because we are a championship side still. We're looking to get promoted this year. We were very close to getting back-to-back -back promotions, but it wasn't quite to be by a single point last season. So, moving forward, we will loan Pinto out this year in an attempt to try and ensure that he stays a whole City player when we reach the Premier League. If we fail to get promotion again this year, I will sell Leonardo Pinto at the end of this season. I can't justify keeping him at the club for three years when he's just as good as he is. So, the starting lineup looks like that currently. I am looking to sell a Delican. So I'm looking for a new right-sided midfielder. However, in the last episode, I showed you on the shortlist, Christos Solis, who looks very good as a winger, has 80 finishing too. We can obviously improve skill moves or weak foot, most importantly weak foot. He's right-footed, even though he's down deep by default as a left wing, but does have right wing in his current positions. And he's pretty expensive is the issue because my transfer budget is currently £14 million. So if I'm to buy players of that calibre, I am going to have to sell to buy. I'm still trying to sell so many players, but nobody apparently wants them. James Scott is on the loan list at his request. He did that last season. The rest are on the loan list because I want to loan them out. Uh, but there's not much we can do financially to raise extra funds. As you can see, we really don't have many options available to us. We could maybe raise an extra six or seven, which doesn't really put us in a position to be able to buy Solis. The preseason tournament that we're going to sim our way through as we continue on now has about four million pounds available to us. If we're able to, uh, if we're able to get it done, and win the win the uh, win the tournament, so <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. We don't yet have the money to buy the sort of player that, at this moment, we feel like we need moving forward. A one-one draw against Palmer on this occasion. I'm not looking to sell anyone that isn't on the transfer list. Everyone else, I would like to keep at the club. Of course, if we get big bids for players, then we might have to be open to letting them go. I'm just going to accept that bid for Duncan Grant. I don't want him at the club. He can leave. So for the time being, I'm potentially looking for a Cam. Because I don't think Dave Gunn is going to be good enough long term. Although I could maybe drop Wilkes to Cam. Even though he can't technically play there. He gets a plus two where he is. He gets a minus two at Cam. But maybe... Not everybody, everybody, I could maybe, because he's such a high rated, maybe we could play him there when he's on 100% happiness, or 100% um, sharpness even, and then sign, or not even sign, play Charlie Barnett or James Scott up top. Maybe I move, maybe I move Wilkes out wide again, don't sign a winger, and just sign a cam and play Charlie Barnett or James Scott as my two strikers this year. But is that going to be, are they going to be good enough to ensure that we get promoted? I don't know. Wallace is growing well. And Honeyman is still decent, but at 27 is probably a player we're going to want to look to move on sooner rather than later. I know he's only 27, but it's FIFA. It's going to slow his growth down. Like, sorry. Uh, Joshua Manuel will continue on at right back. Uh, I could stick with Honeyman for... The longer term but i'm just not sure he's going to grow quickly enough we'd, we'd probably be better off selling him and buying someone that's 76 rated that's even even the same age that's then just going to grow uh, further from there they just get a bit of a head start on him with regards to the rest of the team obviously there are a number of players here that are loan listed or permanently transfer listed 
it would leave us pretty thin on the ground as things stand, but we have the opportunity to perhaps loan the odd player or two ourselves. A nice 2-0 win against Benevento should ensure that we get through the group stage in this preseason tournament. We will advance as far as and play the first uh, league game of the season, which is away from home against Bristol City. Now, you may have glanced there that I've had a honeymoon transfer bid. Uh, Josh Emmanuel is now available again. It's Bournemouth with a bit of £3 million. I would like to get a little bit more than £3 million for him if I can. Or are they open to a straight swap? And it would it would have to be probably a straight swap. Oh, Philip Billing, Jefferson Lerma. Players like that would be incredible, but I'm not going to be able to go... Just not going to be able to get a straight swap for someone like that, am I? <laughs> they just... They quite simply just walk away. So maybe... I mean, I'm, what I'll do is I'll hold off on the sale of Honeyman until you guys have had your say. That's one transfer I won't do until I know whether you do or do not condone the selling or approve the selling of George Honeyman. I won't actively look to sell him in the meantime. But everyone else that's on the transfer list, I'm going to look to sell and we're going to look to try and make some extra money. And we're going to get a little bit more from this uh, from this first round here. Oh, oh that's Grant gone. Good. That's another £850,000 added to the kitty. It's not much, but it might be enough to make the difference between being able to afford who we want and or need and not being able to afford who we want and or need. We might be able to get a permanent transfer and a loan or maybe even a permanent transfer and a pre-contract in the summer, perhaps. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, financially, you can see we sit at £16 million now. I had another million pounds added to that, thanks to that uh, progression from the group stage two. With regards to what the board want from us, actually, I haven't actually checked that this season. Youth development-wise, sign at least two players younger than 20 years of age. You'll have to let me know what sort of players to look for in the youth academy. I'm not sure that I really need to sign any youth players at the minute. But we could maybe try and do that, but I could sign real-life players that uh, 20 years or younger. That's not necessarily from the Youth Academy, is it? Brand exposure, streak of seven games with at least one goal, score, one goal scored in home matches. That should be easily done. Veteran players won. Not asked. Really not bothered about that. And finish the season with a profit margin of 27 million. Now that is going to be pretty difficult. They want me to win the championship. Last season was mid-table. Now they want first place. That's a bit of a jump. Uh, considering we finished seventh last year and they still want the round of 32 in the FA Cup. Surprised they're asking for just the title, although the side is certainly more advanced, considerably more advanced than where it was when they set the mid-table expectation for the previous season. Ah, defeat late on to Sko Olsen against Bologna. That's as far as we'll go in the pre-season tournament then. We'll wait and see if we get any more transfer bids. In the meantime, if not, uh, which we may have done here. No, it's just telling me that they're sorry that we've got knocked out. I'm sorry we got knocked out. Sorry. Uh, what I could do, actually... For the starting lineup, is for the time being maybe move George Honeyman further forward and use actually Wallace can play as a cam. Would he be better suited there? He's only got 58 shooting. Honeyman does have a better shot. I could do that and then just change them in game just to ensure that they get the right boosts. George Honeyman, as we saw from the the, the episode yesterday, actually isn't that good. In, oh my god, isn't that good in front of goal himself either? So we'll uh, we'll wait and see what happens there. Again, waiting on your. Waiting on your uh, your suggestions. But when it comes to transfer suggestions, do bear in mind, I ain't got much money. 17 odd million pounds. It's not going to buy us a worldie. You can see that even players that are 77 rated are out of my price range. I could maybe buy Conor Gallagher at 76 rated. And he could maybe challenge... He could maybe challenge for that cam roll. Or even, even start in the cam roll this season. And we keep George Honeyman... And then when Pinto comes back, provided we get promoted, Gallagher can drop to the centre mid spot where Honeyman was and we'll then sell him. And then Pinto can come back into the cam roll. That could work brilliantly well. That could work brilliantly. In fact, as of this moment in time in history, that is my preferred thing to do, I think. Would be try to buy Conor Gallagher to play him at cam with a view to dropping him to the box-to-box -box centre mid roll next season when Pinto comes back to take over at Cam. Make sense? I think that's actually a pretty good idea. But we'll wait and see what you guys think. And that would mean then that we wouldn't be able to bring in a winger 
it would mean that Wilkes would move out wide and we'd, we'd utilise Charlie Barnett and James Scott up top, meaning that I wouldn't be able to loan out James Scott as he would like to uh, to happen, but he'd get more football this season. So we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. I've had a transfer offer from Braga for Reese Burke. I feel like I can pretty much, I feel pretty comfortable in turning that down, but Reese Burke and Jordi Device are going to have some interest in them, as is Josh Emmanuel probably, and Anthony Wilkes. I keep saying Anthony and I don't know why. Malik Wilkes. So, it's, it's a tough one at the minute. It's, it's, a, it's a real tough one. We may not even be able to sell on the players that I want to sell on. I might have plenty of squad players. Uh, rather than just waffle on and go and actually make sure that I get all my training done and then go and play the game against Bristol City. So, I will see you either at the game against Bristol City or when there's something to show you transfer-wise. Like immediately, Club Bruges have offered me Lewis Openda, who's actually an attacker, I think. Yeah, a striker. Not what I'm after. Lewis Openda, can I see? Let's have a look. View exchange player. 71 finishing. I mean, he's rapid and very strong. He's valued at 10 mil. Do I do that? But the, I've got Charlie Barnett and, um, and James Scott. <laughs> Uh, I'll say no, because I'm not sure I could adequately replace Burke and sign a cam with the money that I'd have left. Right, from there then, I will now see you against Bristol City or after some training or when something else happens in the transfer window. Transfer offer from Auxerre for Cyrus Christie. I could try and negotiate a little more. Ordinarily, I wouldn't really try and wangle out an extra three or four hundred thousand pounds but with the situation we're in that could make the difference be it for a permanent transfer or even just an extra little bit of money to be available for a uh, a loan deal i could try and loan but i could try and do that now they don't seem to be okay i don't want it. i don't want the deal to fall through so let me actually see if i can loan conor gallagher he turned us down last time. This could save us a hell of a lot of money. A hell of a lot of money. Basic terms. We'll only loan him for now. We can always buy him next year if you guys uh, think that he's earned it. And 60-40. Again, we... Agree. I think we tried to do this last year, didn't we? And he turned us down. He said he didn't want to come. They'll pay. They'll let me pay only 40% of his wages. Please come to me, Connor. That would be. That would save me so much money and free up so many more options. Loan declined. So no, if he's to come in, it will be for uh, a permanent transfer. I mean, I don't know why whether he'd actually... I don't know as there are there is the option for people to disagree a permanent transfer or not agree a permanent transfer, but evidently loans they can turn down. Right, moving forward, more training, and then some transfer business or Bristol City. Loan offer for Jack Nielsen, another youngster. Can play anywhere in the midfield. As a loan to buy, we will delegate... And asked for just a simple one-year loan. Nielsen was out on loan last year. And I'm happy for him to go out on loan again. With Wilkes currently being moved to that right-hand side. I then have Jack Barr and, uh, and Andrew currently as my backup wingers. And still a delicate at the club. Barnett can play out wide. Scott can play out wide if needs be. I've got the options. I certainly have availability uh, with me and squad depth in that area so that's not a problem for him to go out on loan hopefully he can continue to grow and uh, maybe even grow so much so that he's in with a shout of being involved next year who knows that could that is basically the plan with a number of the youngsters is send them out on loan because they're not going to get first team football with me but first team football elsewhere might help them grow enough to actually then get first team football with me Confirmation that Cyrus Christie has been sold for £1.55 million to Lorient. He didn't elect to go to Auxerre. So that's a little bit extra added to the budget. We're about 19 to £20 million right now, which is a decent amount. But it's probably only going to buy us one player. We don't have that much money. We're not a club flush with cash at this stage. Nor are we a club that has a number of players that we could potentially sell on to raise a bulk of extra cash. So, for the time being, that is all I can really do. Buy one player or buy one player and loan one other. We've had Nielsen loan agreement. He's going to go to Young Boys for a year in the Swiss division. 
So out on loan to the Swiss Bundesliga he goes. I think it's the Swiss Bundesliga. I know it's the Austrian Bundesliga. I'm not sure actually if it is the, if the Swiss league is called uh, Bundesliga. Uh, we have one more training session to go yet. And yes, I have £19 million available to me. So I'm going to go and have one more train. And then almost certainly now I'll see you against Bristol City. Daniel Bentley in goal with Bristol City, or for Bristol City. Robbie Cundy at centre-back. Former Cambridge United loanee. Thomas Callas there too. Uh, Andy Vyman and Naki Wells as the front two. Again, five at the back for a championship side. Can't recall where Bristol City finished last year. It certainly wasn't too low down the table, I don't think. Solidly a mid-table a mid -table team, I would have said. Nice interception by Charlie Barnett to start things off, but not able to keep possession. We will play just the one game today, I think. I might play another one. I haven't yet decided, but I'm I'm thinking just one because I don't want to advance so far forward that someone that you guys suggest in the comment section has already signed for someone else by the time we get there. Or someone that I already have my eyes on, like Conor Gallagher, signs for someone else in the meantime. So we'll, we'll crack on. We'll play Bristol City. That will probably be the only game that we play in today's episode. And then I am really desperate for your transfer suggestions because I need your feedback before I can record any more. Craig Doherty. Forward to Rob Wallace, not able to find him. Adam Nodge. Oh, tried to get there with Greg Doherty and couldn't quite. That's a ping. Is De Silva on side? He is. Oh no, that's fallen free to Andy Vyman. Thankfully, Jordi Device is able to close it down. That was dangerous. Just not that short there to Greg Doherty, who can drive forward into the space. He might be. I wonder if he can play at Cam, actually. Greg Doherty, because he was a decent source of goals for us at times last year. We'll look to play Charlie Barnett in, who should have been onside, and was. Josh Emmanuel in there to Doherty. And Wilkes, even though we've moved him out to the wing, he's found himself up top through the middle again, but unfortunately not able to bury that into the back of the net. Wallace will deliver the corner, and Device trying to get underneath it. Can't do so. Wallace to cross again. Or oh, I oh, wouldn't quite fall for Charlie Barnett. Good clearance, good defending from Bristol City so far. Hasn't had the opportunity to get there, but Elder's done brilliantly. Well done, Callum Elder. Charlie Barnett on the run in front of me, waiting for him to get away from a defender, which he hasn't really done that well. But here's Greg Doherty, and out there quickly is Malik Wilkes. And if I can drill this into the middle, or even just pull it back to someone, we could take a 1-0 lead. Charles Barnett off the mark. Hull City off the mark for season three. We're 1-0 in front. Josh Emmanuel into Lewis Potter. Here's Barnett again. Tell you what, Charles Barnett is putting in a massive claim for this first team striker spot. Sorry, James Scott. Charlie Barnett appears to have grown well enough in the time that Malik Wilkes was leading the line up top through the middle to genuinely be considered for this first team 11 now. Good movement from him and the pace and, of course, the deadly finish too. And he's got a five-star weak foot on the right-hand side, although, to be fair, James Scott has as well, I think. Two goals in six minutes for Hull. Two goals in six minutes for Charlie Barnett. Great start to the season. We just need to keep it going all year long. And we will get that title, I hope. Asengo through the gap to Hunt pushing forward. Derby equalising against Birmingham. The side that denied us that playoff spot last season by a single point. Although probably by two. It is effectively two, wasn't it? Because of our goal difference. That's Basically counts as a point in its own. But still, Birmingham, the, the side that finished in sixth last year as we fell short in seventh. But aiming a lot higher than seventh this year. Aiming higher than the playoffs. Whether the title is there to be won or not, I don't know. It won't be if another side in the league does what Leeds or Villa did last year and gets 100 plus. I can tell you right now, I will not score over 100 points this season. Sorry for the spoilers, but that is not happening. We are not a side good enough to win 100 points in a championship season. But we'll try and get 80 plus and we'll try and get an automatic promotion spot. Top two's the aim. Title the board one. I'd be happy with second. I'm happy with a 2-0 lead here at home against Bristol City on the opening day. Barnet. Back to Honeyman. To Lewis Potter. And around the corner to Callum Elder. A brilliant left back for us so far on this save, Callum Elder. One of our highest growers as well, actually. Honeyman looking for Barnett, finding him. Oh, he didn't keep the run going, Greg. Doherty made a lovely run, but then stopped just as I committed to play the pass. Could have tried to have a shot with Barnett and get him a hat-trick. Barcelona have apparently signed Dallo Upamecano. I'd be intrigued to see what else happens in the transfer window 
this season. Remember, uh, transfer deadline day alone last summer, £1.1 billion was spent. That's just deadline day alone, £1.1 million. Ah, oh, that was supposed to go to Wallace. Not quite clicking in the final third in this second half, but thankfully we've already got a 2-0 lead. So we don't really need to click that much. We can falter for the rest of the game and still get the win. Corner for Bristol City. There's only been one in the game so far, and that was ours. Adam Nodge delivers. Honeyman's underneath it. Not the worst clearance in the world. Robbie Cundy on underneath the ball on the edge of the box, so to try and bring it back towards the danger zone. I've made some changes. Three, in fact. But whether anyone will have the chance to influence the game in the final few moments, I'm not sure. I did make them a little while ago. Let's poke that out there to Hunt. He brings it down nicely. He's going to need support. It arrives through Adam Nodge. And he's gone all the way home. Robbie Cundy. Oh, 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 that was close. Very nearly able to sneak in there, Jack Barr, and take it off them. And they really would have been in trouble with a lot of players still committed forward. They have numbers falling back now. So that should be all she wrote for this game. I'll try and squeeze another goal scoring chance out of the game if I can. But I think the referee is probably going to blow his whistle soon. Get it across. Yep, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I hoped when I played that one across, he wasn't going to do it. Never mind. Solid victory on the opening day of the championship season in season three. And a man who unexpectedly, as to be said, has found himself back in the starting lineup, gives us both of those goals. Very well done indeed, Charlie Barnett. And Nielsen has gone out on loan. We've had a loan offer for Andrew, which I think for the time being, I'm actually going to... I'm going to reject. I might, for the time being, until we know exactly what we're going to do, take Andrew off the loan list. I think. Until uh, until we've figured out what we're doing elsewhere. So, let me uh, remove from transfer list. There we go. Right. I won't advance any further, because I don't want to run the risk of... Uh, actually, I might go one day, just to see if there are some uh, overalls that update. And we've had a youth a scoutly report a youth scout report, sorry, monthly scout report. Ha! Uh, for, well, players that really don't look that good, do they, to be fair? So, Marco Falca, I'm probably going to release. And, well, Felix Davis apparently has decent potential, but really doesn't look like it. What's his jumping? 70. And how tall is he? 6 foot 2. Well, that screams centre back to me. I'll, uh, how long is it going to take? 11 weeks. Uh,. The obvious thing to do. We'll do that. And, well, we'll wait and see what Hans Erberg does, but not sure. With regards to my youth staff, where do I send them? And for what sort of player do I send them to look for? Let me know in the comment section down below. And thumbs up other comments you agree with as well. Let's have a look at the overalls. Charlie Barnett has gone up to 72 since the last game. Wilkes is... Actually, I'd have to change him back to, uh, oh, well, I'd have to change him back to a right winger if I'm going to do that to actually make the most out of him. Okay, that's something to consider to get a bit more boost out of him. Doherty's up to 75. Device is up to 78. Elder's up to 77. Lewis Potter, 76. Uh, Bayer's up to 71. So there is, uh, McGinnis is down to 65. I just can't seem to shift some of these fringe players on, unfortunately. But I'm not really surprised that nobody wants to buy them because I wouldn't want to buy them either. You never know. Someone might take a punt on some experience in Josh McGuinness at some point, but doesn't look likely at the moment. But fifth to start and uh, hoping to push further up from there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Like I say, let me know in the comment section down below all of your feedback and, uh, and your transfer suggestions with my limited funds. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe with the notification bell tick so you don't miss tomorrow's episode. Do... And I'll see you then.